want it wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Surveillance footage captured a deadly blast rocking central Kyiv today as Russian President Vladimir Putin expands his attacks and pushes toward the capital city. Closing in, the relentless assault continues, Russian air power pounding targets from the sky and civilian casualties are climbing as the refugee crisis spins further out of control. The mounting fears of a wider war after a deadly Russian missile strike just miles from the Poland border could the U.S. and NATO allies be drawn in? And the intense talks today between top U.S. and Chinese officials. As the diplomatic stakes rise, we talked to former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Maria Yovanovitch, a key witness in President Trump's first impeachment trial. The Arctic Showdown, ABC News, with exclusive access to the United States Navy ICE-X training all the way in the Arctic Circle on the doorstep of Russia controlling the icy waters and prepared for anything. He militarizes his part of the Arctic. He has the most coastline of any one nation. Is the U.S. prepared for the long term? I'm not concerned about really any threat. We are ready. We will execute orders. As the world gets warmer and Russian forces get closer. Attacking the homeless, the manhunt tonight for a suspect wanted for a pair of killings in Washington, D.C. and New York City. Police say he is preying on the vulnerable as they sleep in the streets. They're now asking the public for help. And the star actress speaking out, Evan Rachel Wood, is a passionate advocate for victims of domestic abuse and sexual assault. Now she's opening up for the first time, specifically talking about what she says happened to her. He called me 158 times and cut himself every time I didn't pick up the phone and said he was going to kill himself. And her decision to publicly name rocker Marilyn Manson as her alleged abuser. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Davis. Thank you so much for streaming with us. We begin tonight with Vladimir Putin's continued assault on Ukraine as his battlefield expands and Russian forces push even closer to Kyiv. New drone footage shows the smoldering destruction from Russian missile strikes in war-torn Mariupol. It was there that we first saw this image of a pregnant woman on a stretcher after the bombing of a maternity ward. Tragically, today, we learn that she and her unborn child did not survive. Across Ukraine, civilian casualties are climbing, and the number of refugees forced to flee is rapidly approaching 3 million. One Red Cross official called it nothing short of a nightmare. There are also new questions tonight about the possibility of a wider war after a Russian missile attack on a base in western Ukraine, and it killed dozens just 10 miles from the Polish border where NATO territory begins. A fourth round of ceasefire talks is expected tomorrow, and we learned today President Zelensky will address Congress on Wednesday. ABC senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel leads us off once again from Kyiv. This was the moment Russian forces struck the heart of the capital, Kyiv, today. A rocket intercepted, crashing into the city street. At least one person was killed, six wounded, according to local officials. Today saw the heaviest fighting yet around the capital. This morning, a missile slamming into an apartment building in a residential suburb. This is exactly what indiscriminate Russian bombardment actually looks like. An apartment block struck by a missile at five in the morning and you can see the incredible damage that it's done. And scenes like this are being played out across the country on an almost hourly basis. And while the people try and salvage what they can in the background, you can hear the continual sound of heavy Russian bombardment and fighting. Slumped and asleep on what remains of her life, Yaroslava was woken by the shelling. When she looked onto her balcony, the blast hit. She describes a huge explosion and being unable to see clearly. Yaroslava was three years old when the Nazis invaded here. I already survived World War II, she says, and now, as Russia invades 80 years later, it's happening again. It's a miracle only one person was killed by the blast. We met Tatiana, who was with her one-year-old baby in bed when the explosion hit. This was the family just weeks ago. Today, this is what's left of their home. 
сидела с ребенком на кровати. Татьяна says there was a very powerful, loud explosion. My baby started yelling. I never heard in my life cries like that. I saw a huge fireball flying towards us. I grabbed the baby and ran. On the eastern outskirts of Kyiv, fierce fighting today in the same area where a Russian tank column was ambushed and forced to retreat last week. The attacks on Kyiv follow a massive missile strike on a Ukrainian base about 10 miles from the Polish border on NATO's doorstep. At least 35 people were killed at the facility where Ukrainian troops have been trained by American and other NATO forces as recently as last month. Military experts say the Russian invasion remains stalled in many places across Ukraine. Putin's forces switching tactics to shelling towns and cities more heavily and indiscriminately. Mariupol is a vision of hell. Apocalyptic scenes of a burning skyline captured in drone images released by the Ukrainian National Guard. This is collective punishment on an industrial scale. The city's been under siege for more than a week. Without power, heating and low on food and water, officials say over 2,000 people have been killed here. And a pregnant woman rescued last week after Mariupol's maternity hospital was bombed has now reportedly died along with her unborn child. A fourth round of peace talks was held by video link today between Ukrainian and Russian officials. The talks due to resume tomorrow. This weekend, in a town just outside Kyiv, an American journalist, Brent Renault, working for time, was killed while travelling through checkpoints to record the plight of refugees. His colleague survived. We crossed the checkpoint and they start shooting at us. Um, so the driver turned around and they kept shooting. And tonight, a correspondent for Fox News, Benjamin Hall, has been hospitalized after being injured while reporting just outside Kyiv. The extent of his injuries not yet known. Today, Zelensky praised the nation's fighting spirit and celebrated all those taking up arms against the Russians, saying, Together, we will definitely win. Zelensky has remained resolute from the beginning and continues to be. Ian Panel joins us once again from Kyiv. Ian, we heard President Zelensky's message there, but, but there must be real concern at this point in Kyiv as these barrages from Russia are now hitting the Ukrainian capital. Yeah, I mean, I think in some senses, in terms of the Kremlin strategy, we've known from day one that the target has been the capital. They made no bones about their desire to try and want to decapitate the government, decapitate the military. Uh, the truth is that the reality on the ground has been that this invasion has not gone according to plan. They've met far greater, much stiffer resistance than they ever could have banked on. And that means that these large columns, they are clustering ever closer to the capital. I mean, there were times today where it just sounded like thunder rolling around the city, um, but it wasn't. It was a sound of heavy battles, heavy bombardment, uh, intense clashes between Ukrainian forces and Russian forces, mainly to the northeast and the northwest. Now, for now, those Ukrainian forces are managing to hold back the tide, but of course, you have to ask yourself the question, how much longer? The situation is very, very serious, and although these peace talks are ongoing, there are more talks scheduled tomorrow, there are optimistic sounds quite often the most dangerous period is the the days and weeks that lead up to that when the invaders in this case the Russians try and press their advantage as much as possible take as much territory uh, we now know that President Zelensky has been meeting with the war wounded is going to address Congress on Wednesday I think expect him to thank President Biden and the American people for all their support and to press them for even more probably likely to raise this idea of a no-fly zone once more Lindsay? Yeah, something they've been asking for for quite a while now. Ian Panel, our thanks to you as always. As Russia ramps up its attacks, including with that strike just 10 miles from Poland this weekend, senior U.S. officials are warning about what Russia could target next. And it comes as some American veterans are now in Ukraine to fight the Russians. ABC News Chief Global Affairs anchor Martha Raddatz reports in tonight from Lviv. After that deadly cruise missile strike on a Ukrainian base just miles from the Polish border, new concerns tonight of a widening war. The Russians clearly are expanding some of their, uh, some of their target sets. A senior U.S. official warning the Russians could now target Lviv to create more terror. The Russians fearing the city is a staging ground for Western weapons, foreign fighters and high-ranking members of Ukraine's resistance. 
We met up with Americans training with volunteer soldiers from around the world at a secret location in western Ukraine. They built bunkers with tunnels snaking underground and are ready to fight. 25-year-old Harrison Josefowitz, a veteran who did a tour in Afghanistan, quit his job as a Chicago police officer to come here. We're all coming together for the right reasons, and it's, it's a phenomenal sight to see. I can say that Putin doesn't know what's coming. A tougher fight. A very much tougher fight. Navy veteran Lane Perkins left his wife and two-year-old son home in San Diego. These people have an established democracy, and that's something that should be defended. But a U.S. official warns Russia could target not only these training sites inside Ukraine, but weapons bound for Ukraine that are being stored in Poland, risking a direct confrontation with NATO. If Mr. Putin was trying to signal his displeasure about a strong united NATO with this war of his, then he's failed because he's getting exactly what he says he doesn't want, a strong united NATO on his western flank. This as the humanitarian crisis deepens by the day. Nearly three million refugees have fled Ukraine, more than half into Poland, where big cities are struggling to find room. Our Victor Okendo is in Krakow. We have a big challenge to, to do this. Is Krakow running out of room to put everyone? Uh, this is the problem at the moment. Uh, we, we are at, this, at the top of this, our possibilities to, to, uh, to, to, to take people. This shuttered mall was about to be demolished, but it's now being converted into a space for hundreds of families, volunteers doing what they can to comfort the children. Martha Raditz joins us now from Lviv. And Martha, on those weapons bound for Ukraine that have been stored in Poland, how concerned are U.S. officials about a Russian strike in Poland, again, a NATO country? Lindsay, they're worried enough that areas where those weapons are stacked and all together, a senior official tells me they're now dispersing them, spreading them out, because they are so worried that that will be a target in Poland, Lindsay. And just explain what that could mean for NATO. If Russia were to strike inside Poland, would that directly draw immediately the U.S. and its allies into this conflict? Well, it, it would. Article 5, an attack on one and is, is an attack on all. And you've heard the president, you've heard the vice president, you've heard everyone in the administration say they will protect NATO. But this is a, a very, very interesting problem because what is it they do? They've said there would be severe consequences, but would that mean some sort of military confrontation? We've, of course, heard the president say we will not fight in Ukraine, but if Russia attacks NATO... What do they do, Lindsay? Right, that is the red line. Martha Raddatz, our thanks to you as always. You bet. The Biden administration is making a plea to China not to help Russia with its war in Ukraine. For more, let's bring in ABC senior White House correspondent Mary Bruce. And Mary, Press Secretary Jen Psaki said today that China would face significant consequences if it provides Russia with assistance. Did she ever say what those consequences would be? No, Lindsay, she didn't. And the press secretary was asked repeatedly about this, but she refused to detail what options are on the table. What is clear here, though, is that if China assists Russia, either militarily or economically, to try and go around these sanctions that are now battering the Russian economy, then the U.S. and our allies will ensure that China pays a severe price. And one other thing tonight, Lindsay, I'm told that a presidential trip to Europe is possible in the coming weeks. The White House says no final decision has been made yet. The Details are still unclear, but this would, of course, be the president's first trip to meet with our allies since the Russian invasion began. All right, Mary Bruce reporting in from the White House. Sarah, thanks to you, Mary. Thank you. As we wait and certainly hope for a diplomatic end to the war in Ukraine, ABC News Live is joined by Ambassador Marie Yovanovitch, who served as a U.S. ambassador to Ukraine from 2016 to 2019. But before there was a war in Ukraine, there was an impeachment scandal, many of you will remember, in which Ukraine became the centerpiece. In 2019, President Donald Trump asked Ukraine's newly elected president, Volodymyr Zelensky, to investigate his then-opponent, Joe Biden, in exchange for weapons, weapons that would become crucial in the fight 
fight against Russia. Yovanovitch was caught right in the middle of it all and eventually became the target of a smear campaign by the Trump administration. President Trump then removed her from the post. Yovanovitch publicly testified against President Trump in his first impeachment trial. This is detailed in Yovanovitch's new book, Lessons from the Edge, a memoir. Ambassador Marie Yovanovitch, kind enough to join us tonight. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for, for talking with us. Let's start right away, as you can expect, with the war in Ukraine. You lived in Kyiv for years. What's it like for you to watch all this unfolding? Well, it's just devastating. It's just devastating. My neighborhood has been um, bombed along with the rest of Kyiv. Um, but it's really, you know, obviously not about me. It's about uh, the Ukrainian people. And as I'm in touch with many people um, throughout Ukraine, and they are so resilient, so strong, so optimistic, even in the face of this destruction and a war of extermination, they're actually comforting me and saying, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to prevail, uh, that they're okay, uh, that they are strong. And today I also got, uh, you know, a, a uh, um, um, a meme that is going around Ukraine that the spring is going to come and it is going to be blue and yellow. Mm. And do you have any hope that the talks between Russians and Ukrainians could eventually lead to a ceasefire? Eventually. I'm not sure that that's where uh, Vladimir Putin is right now, um, but I think it's important to keep lines of communication open. It's important to keep on talking, at least hopefully, um, to get humanitarian corridors um, set up so that people can, you know, uh, can leave um, cities that are no longer inhabitable because of the barbaric um, aggressiveness of Russia. And you worked at the time to help Ukraine deal with Russian aggression in 2014 when Crimea was seized. In hindsight at this point, do you feel that the Obama administration and NATO allies should have been more forceful in their response? No question. Uh, no question. I think uh, we did slap on um, sanctions. Um, they were not nearly as strong as the sanctions we've got now. We did provide a lot of assistance to Ukraine, including uh, training and equipping um, uh, the uh, Ukrainian military, but we did not provide javelins. I think there was a concern that that would be considered provocative um, by, um, by Putin. Um, but the fact of the matter is, it's Russia that is the provocator. Um, by invading Ukraine in 2014 and now reinvading again. It is Russia that is the aggressor. And um, we need to provide as much assistance as we can to support and, and save Ukraine. And you mentioned that you're an introvert by nature. Of course, you gained nationwide notoriety when you testified against President Trump. Uh, now you're publishing a book. You also talk a lot about speaking truth to power. I explain why that's so important. I think it's important that the American people uh, understand uh, what happened uh, during the Trump administration, what happened with me, uh, because in a democracy, you can't have a fully functioning democracy without, uh, without information, without the truth, without reporters such as yourself getting information out there to the public so that they can make a decision, not necessarily that they would agree with me, but so that they can make their own decisions uh, about uh, what's been happening. And moving forward, of course, this has particular significance because of the war of Russian aggression in Ukraine right now. And in your book, you also talk about the misinformation campaign that Trump began about you online. We're seeing the spread of misinformation now, once again, in the war in Ukraine. How can these false claims poison public perception? Well, I think, you know, you repeat it often enough and it gets into um, media, whether it's on social media or uh, media such as TV and print, uh, that people trust. And um, it, it becomes insidious. Uh, we need to be helping uh, the American public understand the threat of um, disinformation. And we need to um, teach our children critical thinking skills so that they are healthily skeptical about claims that on the face of it seem absurd. And Trump has, has praised Putin for years. We've seen some of that again recently. Do you believe that their relationship played a part into the timing of Putin's attack or, or Putin's confidence building that up? Well, there's no question that President Trump's actions and his statements um, presumably emboldened um, Putin. And I think that Putin 
um, was getting what he needed from President Trump in terms of um, while our, our official policy was very strong with regard to supporting Ukraine, um, but Trump made it pretty clear that to the extent he thought about Ukraine at all, he was dismissive um, and he saw it more as a pawn that could perhaps help him with his personal and political um, ambitions um, than, um, than a sovereign country that deserves U.S. support. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, that uh, President Trump's actions did embolden Putin. And before this conflict, Russians and Ukrainians were, were said to be quite fraternal. Ukraine has only been sovereign, as you know, for just 30 years. How do you think this will alter the region going forward? It's so ironic because there are um, so many, as you said, there are so many uh, familial ties, uh, cultural ties, even linguistic ties um, between the two countries, and of course, commercial ties as well. And, um, you know, wasn't without its complications, uh, as is true with all neighbors, uh, but uh, certainly a, a, a relatively uh, constructive relationship. And Russia, through its own actions in 2014 and now decisively in 2022, has sent Ukraine to the West. Um, there, the Ukrainians um, are never going to turn back to Russia at this point. Never. Not after he has invaded them and destroyed their families and destroyed their livelihoods and destroyed their homes. Um, it is appalling what he has done, uh, all in the name of allegedly protecting people in Ukraine. And you have 33 years of diplomatic experience in your book. You say diplomacy is an art, not a science. At this point, in your estimation, what will it take to end this war in Ukraine? Well, I think we somehow need to get to a place where Putin is ready to seriously talk. His negotiators are, are not, you know, from the inner circle. They're not, um, um, you know, fully, uh, fully empowered, I would say. Uh, and um, hopefully the assistance that we are providing Ukraine, not just us, but other Western countries, um, will be able to help the Ukrainians turn the tide so that there are different facts on the ground. I think Putin miscalculated. He miscalculated the abilities of the Ukrainian military, the will of the Ukrainian people to fight, and the heroism of President Zelensky. And so hopefully that combination, plus Western assistance, uh, will change the facts on the ground so that um, there will need to be um, negotiations of some sort. Whatever happens, this is what I can tell you, there is no path to victory for Russia, because the Ukrainian people will continue to resist. And, and I am curious, because you said that you feel that the diplomacy potentially down the road might be an option. Do you have any guesstimates as far as if we're talking about weeks, if we're talking about months? I think this is going to play out over time, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Marie Ivanovich, we thank you so much for your time tonight. The ambassador's book, Lessons from the Edge, a memoir is out tomorrow. And when we come back, the investigation now underway. Is someone targeting and deliberately killing homeless men? For the first time, actress Evan Rachel Wood sits down and opens up with specific allegations of abuse against Marilyn Manson, what she told me. But up next, with the tensions rising between the U.S. and Russia and with climate change altering the Arctic Circle, our team embeds with the U.S. Navy to see firsthand the stakes in one of the world's most remote corners that we need to be paying attention to. Stick with us. an extraordinary story. A computer salesman was supposed to report to prison to begin a 17-year sentence. They let him turn himself into jail with no escort. No one thought he would run. How do you evade capture for 25 years? How do you do that? Now, join the search, following the U.S. Marshals as they uncover new leads in a global manhunt. Can you help catch this fugitive? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Listen and join the all-new hunt wherever you get your podcasts. The deeper you go into black markets, the darker it gets. Traffic, Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. You have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pow.
What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. World News Now. And America This Morning. The best new video. Breaking news overnight. Your money and concerns about inflation. The pandemic is not over. The stories people are talking about. You don't want to shave your legs? Don't. I was gonna say. And what to expect in the day ahead. From the top of the world, baby! ABC World News Now and America This Morning. Weekday morning starting at 2 a.m. Eastern. Up all night to keep you up to date. Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on all the tough questions, straightforward reporting, no spin, no hype, no bull. Thank you for making ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos the number one Sunday morning news show versus the competition. Welcome to This Week. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24 Seven. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. She was diva. Drama. Money and fame. Shaw amazing. The prime housewife. Then suddenly, we've seen a lot of things on The Real Housewives, but we've never seen anyone be arrested. Unpredictable rich woman. Sign me up. Money. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. We love what we do. Aww. Times are tough, but healing animals actually helps heal the community. Thank you so much. Representation matters. Kids see us, and they say, I can do that. You want to be a veterinarian one day? Yes. Yeah. That is awesome. You ready to be a critter fix? What you think, bud? <laughs> Have you ever touched a cow? We get to do this as best friends. It don't get any better than that. We're healing with feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dr. Bernard Hodges. And I'm Dr. Terrence Ferguson. And, and we're, we're the, the Critter, critter Fixers. Fixers. Critter Fixers, new season Saturday, March 26th at 9 on Nat Geo Wild. Российский премьер подчеркнул, надо усилить сотрудничество в рамках союзного государства, а на совещании в правительстве обсуждали, как сохранить... That protester with the sign, stop the war and don't believe the propaganda they're lying to you here, is now in custody after she interrupted Russia's main state news broadcast in Moscow. She's been identified as an, an editor for a separate channel, and her brave act comes as the Kremlin has cracked down on how the war is covered inside Russia. And next, we want to take you deep into the Arctic Circle, to the fast-changing front lines between U.S. and Russia. While Russia's war with Ukraine seems far away from there, there are increasing tensions and our warming planet means what happens in the Arctic Circle could have far-reaching implications for us all. Arcana Whitworth embedded with the U.S. Navy and got exclusive access to a special training exercise. ABC News given exclusive access to the United States Navy ICE-X training. The exercise getting underway amid growing tensions and changing geopolitics in the Arctic region, a landscape prime for Vladimir Putin's expansion ambitions. As he militarizes his part of the Arctic, he has the most coastline of any one nation. Is the U.S. prepared for the long term? I would say we're very prepared, and these exercises are absolutely key. I'm not concerned about really any threat. We are ready. We will execute orders. Temperatures at negative 20 degrees and below with wind chill. The Arctic is still the fastest warming place on the planet. Scientists also travel to the far northern region to work in conjunction with the Navy. They are studying the cracking and melting Arctic ice. Do you feel like there's a rush now more than ever to gather some of this information? It's more important than ever that we take this data and we start to really understand the whys of how it's happening so that we can feed that back to the broader scientific community and uh, eventually the policymakers. As the region changes from white to blue, it will be more accessible for not only shipping, tourism and resource development, but it is also putting Russian forces even closer to U.S. borders. Out here, equipment and endurance is put to the test. The Navy, along with civilian scientists and engineers, set up camp on an ice floe 160 miles away from land. They're going to take us over to ice camp over there. They call it ice camp Queenfish to honor the first...
first ever submarine to operate under the ice. This right here is our logistics tent. Underneath the ice, Navy divers and two American submarines, the Pasadena and Illinois, train in launching torpedoes, along with finding and invading enemy subs. We're an Arctic nation. It's very important for us to operate up here. There's a lot of people who'd like to hide from the U.S. submarine force. I just say they're not very successful. Swimming through icy waters, divers retrieve each torpedo and bring it back for data collection, learning how to better locate a target in this inhospitable environment. We're going to deploy the divers and go from that particular angle directly to the torpedo. The biggest challenge would be determining how much weight the recovery team is going to deploy inside the water. Taking a helicopter from camp further onto the ice, we embarked on the USS Pasadena. So here it is, that's the sail. Allowing it to punch up through the Arctic ice as thick as five feet or more. Welcome aboard. Yeah, all right, let's go. Ice columns plunge deep into the ocean, so the Pasadena has to dive at least 150 feet before it can move forward. Careful helmsmanship under the ice canopy is key. Do the launch cycle that through. The submarine is relegated to internal navigation systems because they can't surface daily to get GPS coordinates. Satellite signal doesn't travel through uh, through the water. So what we do is we use a system of lasers, accelerometers, and other equipment to keep track of where the ship has moved since the last time it had a GPS fix. The Pasadena can be equipped with up to 20 torpedoes. Launch accuracy in this frigid water can put a strain on vessels' firepower and sonar equipment. We're putting a lot of noise in the water that's all just bouncing off these keels, and it gets really confusing to us and to the, uh, and to the weapons. That's one of the biggest challenges we have of kind of making sense of all the information and uh, picking out the, the one, two pieces that makes the most sense to operate the ship. For successful undersea warfare in this dangerous environment, they have to constantly adapt their tactics. In this ice-picking exercise, something they had never done before, they successfully lodge and hold the 350-foot submarine just under the ice, turn off the engines, and essentially hide as the other submarine tries to hit it with training torpedoes. That was excellent. Good work. On the doorstep of one of our fiercest adversaries, the Navy is confident it's ready for anything. We have the largest nuclear submarine force in the world. It offers us unprecedented mobility, didn't need to come to the surface, and you could stay submerged yeah. for as long as you wanted. Any adversary doesn't know where we're at. We're exceptionally stealthy, and we're watching all the time. The Navy very confident about their ability. Kana Whitworth joins us now from Anchorage, Alaska. And Kana, uh, you're back from that remarkable access to how the Navy is training. You spent three days with them in sub-zero temperatures, then on a submarine. What struck you most about what you saw? You know, Lindsay, I think to no surprise, the toughness of our Navy and their adaptability. I mean, it was really incredible. You have to think about a lot of those divers you saw, they're stationed in Hawaii and they were up there in the Arctic diving under the ice and absolutely loving every second of it. Also, those men on the submarine having to deal with a scenario and an environment they had never been in and doing exercises they had never done before and doing them successfully. And Kenny, you're also learning tonight a very important piece of Arctic climate research has been halted as a result of Russia's war. Right, so we have to keep this in mind that the Arctic is warming twice as fast as everywhere else on the planet. And most of the Arctic is in Russia. And there was a huge study looking at the melting permafrost there. And what the melting permafrost does is it emits these greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. Well, that study was now suspended. And one scientist I heard from says they're very concerned now, Lindsay, because that could lead to severe miscalculations when it comes to how aggressively we must pursue pursue our emissions reductions. There are real global consequences there, Lindsay. Wow. All right, Kena Whitworth, we thank you so much for your coverage there in Anchorage. Still ahead here on Prime, the unimaginable tragedy after police say a three-year-old shot and killed his own mother in this parking lot. Now his father could face charges. As oil and gas prices continue to surge, what one group of criminals is accused of doing. And happy Pi Day, something we just had to look at by the numbers. But first, our tweet of the day. Dolly Parton says she does not want to be considered for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and we could not disagree more.
powerful stories of our time, anytime. Nightline. It's an extraordinary story. A computer salesman was supposed to report to prison to begin a 17-year sentence. They let him turn himself into jail with no escort. No one thought he would run. How do you evade capture for 25 years? How do you do that? Now, join the search, following the U.S. Marshals as they uncover new leads in a global manhunt. Can you help catch this fugitive? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Listen and join the all-new hunt wherever you get your podcasts. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real-life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues. The Hunt. True crime. 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. What if you could test your blood in your own home? This machine is going to help millions of people. Get the money! Yeah! Don't you think it's strange that we haven't seen a single completed contract? She lies. That's who she is. This isn't just my job. This is my religion. National parks are incredibly safe places. A crime will happen. Hey, my mom, my wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA 3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. I know what happened, and I'm not guilty. Why the fascination with criminal trials? Figure out what's really out there. She revealed she had murdered his family. I know in my heart that he did this. It's the time of suspicion. The ending's really tough. You don't know whether truth is going to be difficult to find. Unless you try to find it. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. This was the most sensational, the most twisted, the most bizarre story I've ever covered. He got a kick out of getting away with things because he was wealthy and he had the power to do it. After getting away with murder for decades, now the story you haven't heard. Oh my God. Interviews with the star witness that helped bring him down and the prosecutor who finally brought him to justice. What do they now say? Unbelievable. The new 2020 Friday night on ABC. Welcome back, everyone. Today is March 14th. For the math lovers out there, it is Pi Day. Let's take a look appropriately by the numbers. Pi, the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter, equals 3.14159 for short, which is why we mark 314 as Pi Day, regardless of the size of a circle. The circumference and diameter always have that same exact ratio. The mathematical constant has been calculated to more than one trillion digits behind its decimal point and amazingly continues infinitely without repetition or pattern. Pi dates back to approximately 250 BC when the Greek mathematician Archimedes was considered the first person to accurately approximate pi. So how did Pi Day come about? Well, back in 1988, a physicist at the San Francisco Exploratorium Science Museum organized the earliest known celebration with the staff marching in a circle and then eating pie. It's now become a pop cultural phenomenon of sorts with discounts on pie and pizza available in many places today. And in 2009, the U.S. House passed a non-binding resolution 
in recognizing March 14th as a National Pi Day, which also happens to be physicist Albert Einstein's birthday. One historical footnote, back in 1897, the Indiana State Legislature actually considered a bill to change pi to 3.2 to simplify things based on a local doctor's formula. Spoiler alert, it did not work, thanks to a Purdue math professor who intervened. And we still have lots to get to here on Prime tonight. The four-time major champion and former number one player in the world reduced to tears because of a heckler in a tournament. The same tournament the Williams sisters boycotted for more than a decade. And we celebrate the life of iconic actor William Hurt. First, to look at our top trending stories on abcnews.com. Choose ABC News, America's number one news source. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Admit it, these days what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. This was the most sensational, the most twisted, the most bizarre story I've ever covered. He got a kick out of getting away with things because he was wealthy and he had the power to do it. After getting away with murder for decades, now the story you haven't heard. Oh my God. Interviews with the star witness that helped bring him down and the prosecutor who finally brought him to justice. What do they now say? Unbelievable. The new 2020 Friday night on ABC. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. We have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. He thought he was God. He's now one of the most vilified men in the world. He is the everyman. Zelensky is the Tom Hanks of Ukraine. The fact that a little nice Jewish boy is 5'7", is showing up this KGB agent in the Kremlin. What do you say to Americans who see Russia and you not only as a rival, but an unfriendly adversary? Two men at war. Which Vladimir will take over? The world is not going to be the same. Christopher Steele, the guy who picked a fight with two presidents, and he's lived to tell the tale. That now infamous dossier. Supposedly a tape showing prostitutes hired by Donald Trump urinating on a bed. It would be quite a tape if it in fact existed. I said take out the PP tape. It quickly became a question of how much of this was accurate. This is the stuff of movies. A lot of this is the stuff of movies. The story of epic proportions. Phony stuff. It's a bunch of crap. It changed history. The deeper you go into black markets, the darker it gets. Traffic, Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. We love what we do. Uh, Times are tough, but healing animals actually helps heal the community. Thank you so much. Representation matters. Kids see us, and they say, I can do that. You want to be a veterinarian one day? Yes. Yeah. That is awesome. You ready to be a critter fix? <laughs> What's that, bud? <laughs> Have you ever touched a cow? We get to do this as best friends. It's going to get any better than that. We're healing with feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dr. Bernard Hodges. And I'm Dr. Terrence Ferguson. And, and we're, we're the, the critter, critter Fixers. Fixers. Critter Fixers, new season Saturday, March 26th at 9 on Nat Geo Wild.
national average for unleaded gas prices has reached 432 a gallon as oil plunged under $100 a barrel during the course of the day. A little more than 8% at one point. That erased the previous $130 a barrel price point. Experts say if oil prices continue the downward trend, the price of gas could drop slightly before rising again this summer. According to a new ABC News Ipsos poll, Americans overwhelmingly support the White House's proposed ban on Russian oil. Though they remain critical of the president's handling of the economy, with 70% disapproving of his handling of inflation. From gas, store-bought products to services, the price hikes running rampant. As the cost of gas spikes across the nation, a new warning about thieves at the pump. Take a look at this video. While it may look like nothing is happening here, the manager at a gas station in Houston says thieves are taking thousands of dollars worth of gas, 360 gallons per day for three days from the underground tank. Cases of gas theft are popping up all over the country, from California to Virginia. In Washington state, the Everett Police Department is issuing a new warning about people siphoning gas, writing on Facebook, while some thieves use rubber hoses to siphon fuel out, we are seeing modern day thieves use power tools to drill a hole in the gas tank and steal fuel. I feel like I've cried enough on camera, but oh. Naomi Osaka taking the mic after her second round loss to Veronica Kutermotova at the Indian Wells Masters. The 24-year-old requesting to address the crowd after being heckled by a spectator in the stands. A visibly upset Osaka asking the chair umpire to have the heckler removed, but the umpire rejecting her request. Osaka saying the setting reminded her of Serena Williams playing there in 2001. The crowd booing as Richard and Venus Williams watched her play, an incident the family calls traumatic and believes was racist. A young mother killed in a grocery store parking lot in Dalton, Illinois over the weekend after her toddler accidentally shot her. Police saying a three-year-old boy got hold of a gun in the back seat of his parents' car and began playing with the weapon. It discharged, hitting his mother, 22-year-old Deja Bennett, in the neck. She died a short time later. The little boy's father, who was also present at the time of the shooting, is now in custody as police determine whether there are any charges to be filed against him. SNL star and Kim Kardashian's boyfriend Pete Davidson is heading to space. One of six passengers on board Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin rocket launching next week. Davidson will be part of a fourth human flight for Blue Origin's New Shepard program and the 20th in its history. He'll join William Shatner and GMA's own Michael Strahan among celebrities that have flown with Blue Origin. That launch currently scheduled for 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, March 23rd from West Texas. Oscar-winning actor William Hurt has passed away at the age of 71. Whether it was mourning his college friend in the Big Chill or channeling a telegenic anchorman in broadcast news, William Hurt became a leading man for the baby boomer generation. Hurt was nominated for an Oscar in the Best Actor category three years in a row, but the big win came in 1985 for Kiss of the Spider Woman. In recent years, Hurt stepped into the Marvel Universe, playing Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. He continued to work on films like Black Widow, despite his prostate and bone cancer diagnosis in 2018. Welcome back. Now to an investigation that stretches from Washington, D.C. to here in New York. A manhunt is now underway for a suspect police say is targeting homeless men in both cities. At least five have been shot and two killed. The suspect can be seen on surveillance. Stephanie Ramos reports. Tonight, authorities in New York City and Washington, D.C. are on the hunt for this man, suspected of targeting the homeless while they were sleeping outdoors. He's believed to have shot at least five men, killing two of them. The ATF believes the same gun was used in each of the shootings. It is unconscionable um, that anybody would target this vulnerable population. The mayors of both cities announcing a joint investigation, vowing to protect the most vulnerable. This was a cold-blooded attack. We don't want to lose another resident. 
According to D.C. police, between March 3rd and March 9th, the suspect shot three men, one of them dying from his injuries. And over the weekend, the killer striking again, this time in Manhattan. Police reviewing this disturbing video showing the suspect tapping a sleeping man with his foot. Authorities say he opened fire, killing him. They say a short time before that, he allegedly shot another person who survived. Our thanks to Stephanie. And tonight, authorities are warning the homeless to move into shelters and stay off the streets for their safety. Police in New York City and also Washington, D.C., along with the ATF, are now offering a reward of up to $70,000 for any information. Their message to that suspect, turn yourself in. We're coming for you. Evan Rachel Wood says that she knew that she would be starting a war when she decided to publicly name her alleged abuser as Brian Warner, known to many as Marilyn Manson. But since Wood went public, several others have also come forward and accused Warner of abusive behavior. Now, for the first time, Wood is sitting down, opening up about what she says happened to her. So many survivors live in fear of judgment and retaliation and mainly live with shame. And I know because I experienced it, and it was time to stop being silent. She's known for hit films like 13. Let me, let me see that. No, mom! And shows like Westworld. Is this really what you want? They never gave us a choice before, Teddy. But in 2018, Evan Rachel Wood took on a new role as an activist for domestic violence and sexual assault victims, testifying twice before lawmakers about what she says was her own personal experience with abuse. He broke me down through means of starvation, sleep deprivation, and threats against my life. At the time, you did not name mm -hmm. the person who you said had abused you. Why? I was too scared. It was made very clear to me that there would be retaliation. And to expose a person in power and who is as high profile as he is, uh, clearly is a huge undertaking. On February 1st of last year, Wood publicly named her alleged abuser as Brian Warner, otherwise known as Marilyn Manson, who she says she met when she was 18 and then dated on and off for more than four years. The new HBO documentary, Phoenix Rising, details her journey to naming him. He responded after you named him publicly, saying horrible distortions of reality, saying that his intimate relationships have always been entirely consensual with like-minded partners. What did you think of his response? From what I can tell, he's alluding to the fact that maybe this was just kinky sex. Brian and I did not have a BDSM relationship. We did not have kinky sex. This is not a sexual preference. This is not, that's not what we're talking about here. The heavy metalist is known for his shock rock, an often controversial persona. Would you say that it's a fair assessment to say that he kind of came as advertised? No, I mean, I don't think the world would have put him on such a pedestal if they really thought that his act was real. In the film, Wood describes the psychological and physical trauma she claims Warner put her through. You claim that Brian raped you, cut you, beat you, forced you to drink his blood, all without your consent. Mm -hmm. Recalling one of her several attempts to leave him. He called me 158 times and cut himself every time I didn't pick up the phone and said he was going to kill himself. This is when people in my life started saying, you need to get a restraining order. And I said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. That, that, the getting a restraining order seemed crazy to me because I was like, you're only going to make him more mad. I went back to his home to try to defuse the situation after he'd been cutting himself and threatening suicide. And I was severely punished. Earlier this month, Warner filed a lawsuit against Wood and an activist featured in the documentary named Ilma Gore, whom he calls Wood's on-again, off-again romantic partner. The complaint claims they used the film project to recruit, coordinate, and pressure women who had been linked to Warner to make false accusations of abuse against him. It also alleges, among other things, they impersonated an FBI agent in a fictitious letter claiming there was a federal investigation into Warner and that Wood and his other alleged victims were in danger. In response to the documentary, Warner's attorney released this statement to ABC News, saying in part, nothing that Evan Rachel Wood, Ilma Gore, or their hand-picked co-conspirators have said on this matter can be trusted. This is just more of the same. But then again, what else would you expect from a group who have spread falsehood after falsehood about Brian? I stand by everything that I've said about the abuse allegations. Can you 
establish if the claims against you are false? I don't believe I'm legally allowed to comment on any of the allegations, but I am very confident that I have the truth on my side. Wood says that she was interviewed by the FBI last November. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department raided Warner's home. The LASD says its investigation is ongoing. The FBI would not comment. The two-part HBO documentary film Phoenix Rising debuts tomorrow, March 15th and March 16th on HBO and HBO Max. What you are looking at here is real life. That man who you just saw jumping onto a car was trying to stop someone who just committed a car break-in. He was unsuccessful. This wild car robbery happened in a popular tourist spot in San Francisco. The man and car remain at large. The individual who tried to stop the robber is said to be doing okay. Tonight, the NBA has fined the Brooklyn Nets $50,000 after Kyrie Irving violated the New York City law and league health and safety protocols during a weekend game. The NBA says Irving, who was in attendance at the game, sitting courtside, broke the rules when he entered the locker room at halftime. Current New York City rules prohibit prohibit unvaccinated players on the Nets or Knicks from playing in home games. Irving is allowed to attend the games as a fan at Barclays Center despite his vaccination status. And turning back to Ukraine, their national anthem is only one verse and one chorus. It was penned less than three decades ago, but the people of that nation are lifting their voices resolutely in song and spirit. Despite the escalating horror of war, for a short time on Saturday, Ukraine has not yet perished. The aptly named national anthem of Ukraine silenced any sirens or bombs. An open-air performance by members of the Odessa National Academy Theater Orchestra brandishing their bows in defiance, perhaps emboldened by the lyrics that now take on renewed meaning. The luck will still smile on us brother Ukrainians. Right in the center of Odessa, in earshot of their fellow countrymen who also sing, carrying a tune as they carry sandbags to fortify their beloved city and statues and all they hold dear. Tirelessly they work. Heavy hearts and boundless patriotism carry the day. It is the same tune in Lviv. Opera singers in the city center only hours after Russian missiles pounded a military training base not far away that killed 35 people. Hand to heart, shoulder to shoulder, they stand. Bundled up, brave souls belting out the lyrics. Our enemies will die as the dew does in the sunshine. And we two brothers will live happily in our land. Still hitting the high notes in the middle of war striking a chord with us all. And before we go tonight, the image of the day, a girl holding her sibling in a temporary shelter for Ukrainian refugees. The number of families who have fled their home in the past few weeks is now approaching three million. And that is our show for this hour. Be sure to stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Martha Raditz visits a secret location where foreign fighters are being trained to join the Ukrainian war against the Russians. And later, we sit down with Lizzo as a new project coming out. Stay with us. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any place else. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast, now streaming on ABC News Live. Elizabeth Holmes found guilty on four counts of fraud, facing the possibility of decades in prison. Now, we take you inside the courtroom and behind the scenes. The Dropout, Elizabeth Holmes on Trial. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. National parks are incredibly safe places. A crime will happen. 
911. My wife had fallen. She in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Hi there, I'm Lindsay Davis. Thanks so much for streaming with us. We're monitoring several developments here at ABC News at this hour. Police in New York are searching for the man who stabbed two employees at the famous Museum of Modern Art. Authorities say surveillance video shows Gary Cabana jump over the museum front desk and then attack two women who work there. Investigators believe he was angry that his membership had been revoked the day before. One of the victims is still in the hospital. The wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas says that she was at the January 6th Stop the Steal rally before for the Capitol attack. In an interview with the conservative Washington Free Beacon, Ginny Thomas said that she left before President Trump took the stage. She says she is disappointed that there was violence that day. A spokesperson for the Supreme Court has not yet commented. Rideshare apps Uber and Lyft announced new surcharges that will hit riders to help drivers deal with the rising cost of gas. Beginning Wednesday, Uber users will pay a surcharge of 45 or 55 cents per ride. The company says 100% of that will go to work. Workers. Lyft says that it will also add a temporary surcharge to rides, which will go to the drivers. The company says it will release more details soon. And we turn now to Vladimir Putin's continued assault on Ukraine as Russian forces push closer to Kyiv and as civilian casualties continue to climb. The number of refugees forced to flee is rapidly approaching 3 million. There are also new questions tonight about the possibility of a wider war after a Russian missile attack on a base in western Ukraine killed dozens just 10 miles from the Polish border where NATO territory begins. ABC News senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel reports in once again from Kyiv. This was the moment Russian forces struck the heart of the capital, Kyiv, today. A rocket intercepted, crashing into the city street. At least one person was killed, six wounded, according to local officials. Today saw the heaviest fighting yet around the capital. This morning, a missile slamming into an apartment building in a residential suburb. This is exactly what indiscriminate Russian bombardment actually looks like. An apartment block struck by a missile at five in the morning, and you can see the incredible damage that it's done. And scenes like this are being played out across the country on an almost hourly basis. And while the people try and salvage what they can in the background, you can hear the continual sound of heavy Russian bombardment and fighting. Slumped and asleep on what remains of her life, Yaroslava was woken by the shelling. When she looked onto her balcony, the blast hit. She describes a huge explosion and being unable to see clearly. Yaroslava was three years old when the Nazis invaded here. I already survived World War II, she says, and now, as Russia invades 80 years later, it's happening again. It's a miracle only one person was killed by the blast. We met Tatiana, who was with her one-year-old baby in bed when the explosion hit. This was the family just weeks ago. Today, this is what's left of their home. Tatiana says there was a very powerful, loud explosion. My baby started yelling. I never heard in my life cries like that. I saw a huge fireball flying towards us. I grabbed the baby and ran. On the eastern outskirts of Kyiv, fierce fighting today in the same area where a Russian tank column was ambushed and forced to retreat last week. 
The attacks on Kyiv follow a massive missile strike on a Ukrainian base about 10 miles from the Polish border on NATO's doorstep. At least 35 people were killed at the facility where Ukrainian troops have been trained by American and other NATO forces as recently as last month. Military experts say the Russian invasion remains stalled in many places across Ukraine. Putin's forces switching tactics to shelling towns and cities more heavily and indiscriminately. Mariupol is a vision of hell. Apocalyptic scenes of a burning skyline captured in drone images released by the Ukrainian National Guard. This is collective punishment on an industrial scale. The city's been under siege for more than a week. Without power, heating and low on food and water, officials say over 2,000 people have been killed here. And a pregnant woman rescued last week after Mariupol's maternity hospital was bombed has now reportedly died along with her unborn child. A fourth round of peace talks was held by video link today between Ukrainian and Russian officials. The talks due to resume tomorrow. This weekend, in a town just outside Kyiv, an American journalist, Brent Renault, working for time, was killed while travelling through checkpoints to record the plight of refugees. His colleague survived. We crossed a checkpoint and they start shooting at us. Um, so the driver turned around and they kept shooting. And tonight, a correspondent for Fox News, Benjamin Hall, has been hospitalized after being injured while reporting just outside Kyiv. The extent of his injuries not yet known. Today, Zelensky praised the nation's fighting spirit and celebrated all those taking up arms against the Russians, saying, Together, we will definitely win. Zelensky has remained resolute from the beginning and continues to be. Ian Panel joins us once again from Kyiv. Ian, we heard President Zelensky's message there, but, but there must be real concern at this point in Kyiv as these barrages from Russia are now hitting the Ukrainian capital. Yeah, I mean, I think in some senses, in terms of the Kremlin strategy, we've known from day one that the target has been the capital. They made no bones about their desire to try and want to decapitate the government, decapitate the military. Uh, the truth is that the reality on the ground has been that this invasion has not gone according to plan. They've met far greater, much stiffer resistance than they ever could have banked on. And that means that these large columns, they are clustering ever closer to the capital. I mean, there were times today where it just sounds sounded like thunder rolling around the city, um, but it wasn't. It was a sound of heavy battles, heavy bombardment, uh, intense clashes between Ukrainian forces and Russian forces, mainly to the northeast and the northwest. Now, for now, those Ukrainian forces are managing to hold back the tide, but of course, you have to ask yourself the question, how much longer? The situation is very, very serious, and although these peace talks are ongoing, there are more talks scheduled tomorrow, there are optimistic sounds quite often the most dangerous period is the the days and weeks that lead up to that when the invaders in this case the Russians try and press their advantage as much as possible take as much territory uh, we now know that President Zelensky has been meeting with the war wounded is going to address Congress on Wednesday I think expect him to thank President Biden and the American people for all their support and to press them for even more probably likely to raise this idea of a no-fly zone once more Lindsay? It's something they've been asking for for quite a while now. Ian Panel, our thanks to you as always. And while President Biden has vowed U.S. troops will not get involved in this conflict, Ukraine's government has actively recruited foreigners to join their fight. More than 20,000 have expressed interest, and our Martha Raddatz went to a secret location to meet some of the Americans joining that fight. They have already built the bunkers with tunnels snaking beneath the earth, and they say they are ready to fight. Vladimir Putin is an incredibly tough foe. Ruthless, killed a lot of people. Are you willing to risk your life for this country? I definitely think that fighting the war here is worth it because it keeps the war away from the home front. Lane Perkins, a Navy veteran, has a wife and a two-year-old son at home in San Diego. When he heard President Biden warn of an invasion, he knew. So at 26 years old, he got on a plane and then to the Georgian Legion, headquartered here in Ukraine. I felt personally that this was the 
by far the best option for military service to Ukraine. The legion from the former Soviet Republic of Georgia is made up of volunteers from around the world. Most of the people ex-military. Their job to train, get civilians and refugees across the border. But are you going to be in the fight? Uh, me personally, yeah, if, if, it's, if it's needed, I'll be in the fight. Harrison Josephowitz is 25 and was a Chicago police officer. You just quit your job and got on a plane? Pretty much. Why? This is the right thing to do. Harrison spent five years in the U.S. Army and did a tour in Afghanistan. This is already has more refugees than Afghanistan, and we just we, we can't sit idly and just watch it happen. The Georgian Legion runs daily training, everything from first aid to shooting and moving techniques. I can say that Putin doesn't know what's coming. A tougher fight. A very much tougher fight. We're going to see an exponential increase in numbers very, very shortly here. They're going to be the hardcore battle-trained Americans, Brits, and everybody else in between. British citizen Christopher Garrett has spent his life in war zones around the world. He is now bringing life-saving equipment to Ukraine and vetting others who want to help. People need to understand that if they're coming to Ukraine to fight or to provide medical support or anything, they, they need to be coming for, for the good of Ukraine. Overseeing this operation, a Georgian. I've been at war with Russia for the uh, last 30 years and I have never seen such a brutality. Mamuka says at the age so of 14, he was here. captured and held in Russian captivity. What do you think is the end? I don't know who will stay alive out of this war, but uh, I'm sure that we will win it. He says the men volunteering to fight for Ukraine are the faces of democracy. Being quiet and hiding and closing eyes on what is going on will not avoid us World War III. And those Russian soldiers on the other side, many young and inexperienced. They are just sending their like young soldiers to get like slaughtered, I would say. Emmanuel is Albanian. He's been living in Ukraine for a few years. It's now his home, and he says he will protect it at all costs. If they want my gun, they can come and take it. I have a lot of brothers here. If they're coming here, they will get what they deserve. Our thanks to Martha for that. Next tonight, we want to take you deep into the Arctic Circle to the fast-changing front lines between U.S. and Russia. While Russia's war with Ukraine seems like a world away from there, increasing tensions remain. And our warming planet mean what happens in the Arctic Circle could have far-reaching implications for us all. Arcana Whitworth embedded with the U.S. Navy and got exclusive access to a special training exercise. ABC News given exclusive access to the United States Navy ICE-X training. The exercise getting underway amid growing tensions and changing geopolitics in the Arctic region. A landscape prime for Vladimir Putin's expansion ambitions. As he militarizes his part of the Arctic, he has the most coastline of any one nation. Is the U.S. prepared for the long term? I would say we're very prepared and these exercises are absolutely key. I'm not concerned about really any threat. We are ready. We will execute orders. Temperatures at negative 20 degrees and below with wind chill. The Arctic is still the fastest warming place on the planet. Scientists also travel to the far northern region to work in conjunction with the Navy. They are studying the cracking and melting Arctic ice. Do you feel like there's a rush now more than ever to gather some of this information? It's more important than ever that we take this data and we start to really understand the whys of how it's happening so that we can feed that back to the broader scientific community and uh, eventually the policymakers. As the region changes from white to blue, it will be more accessible for not only shipping, tourism and resource development, but it is also putting Russian forces even closer to U.S. borders. Out here, equipment and endurance is put to the test. The Navy, along with civilian scientists and engineers, set up camp on an ice floe 160 miles away from land. They're going to take us over to ice camp over there. They call it ice camp Queenfish to honor the first ever submarine to operate under the ice. This right here is our logistics tent. Underneath the ice, Navy divers and two American submarines, the Pasadena and Illinois, train in launching torpedoes along with finding and invading enemy subs. We're an Arctic nation. It's very important for us to operate up here. There's a lot of people who'd like to hide from the U.S. submarine force. I just say they're not very successful. Swimming through icy waters, divers retrieve each torpedo and bring it back for data collection. 
learning how to better locate a target in this inhospitable environment. We're going to deploy the divers and go from that particular angle directly to the torpedo. The biggest challenge would be determining how much weight the recovery team is going to deploy inside the water. Taking a helicopter from camp further onto the ice, we embarked on the USS Pasadena. So here it is, that's the sail. Allowing it to punch up through the Arctic ice as thick as five feet or more. Welcome aboard. Yeah, all right, let's go. Ice columns plunge deep into the ocean, so the Pasadena has to dive at least 150 feet before it can move forward. Careful helmsmanship under the ice canopy is key. Do the launch cycle that through. The submarine is relegated to internal navigation systems because they can't surface daily to get GPS coordinates. Satellite signal doesn't travel through, uh, through the water. So what we do is we use a system of lasers, accelerometers, and other equipment to keep track of where the ship has moved since the last time it had a GPS fix. The Pasadena can be equipped with up to 20 torpedoes. Launch accuracy in this frigid water can put a strain on vessels' firepower and sonar equipment. We're putting out a lot of noise in the water that's all just bouncing off these keels, and it gets really confusing to us and to the, uh, and to the weapons. That's one of the biggest challenges we have of kind of making sense of all the information and uh, picking out the, the one, two pieces that makes the most sense to operate the ship. For successful undersea warfare in this dangerous environment, they have to constantly adapt their tactics. In this ice picking exercise, something they had never done before, they successfully lodge and hold the 350 foot submarine just under the ice, turn off the engines and essentially hide as the other submarine tries to hit it with training torpedoes. That was excellent, good work. On the doorstep of one of our fiercest adversaries, the Navy is confident it's ready for anything. We have the largest nuclear submarine force in the world. It offers us unprecedented mobility, didn't need to come to the surface, and you could stay submerged yeah. for as long as you wanted. Any adversary doesn't know where we're at. We're exceptionally stealthy, and we're watching all the time. Very confident our thanks to Kana for that. And still to come, tens of millions are now in lockdown because of a spike in COVID. We'll tell you where. And is the time change messing with your sleep as well? ABC News Live anchor Diane Macedo, who also doubles as our resident sleep expert, joins us with a few tips next. It was an extraordinary story. A computer salesman was supposed to report to prison to begin a 17-year sentence. They let him turn himself into jail with no escort. No one thought he would run. How do you evade capture for 25 years? How do you do that? Now, join the search, following the U.S. Marshals as they uncover new leads in a global manhunt. Can you help catch this fugitive? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Listen and join the all-new hunt wherever you get your podcasts. The deeper you go into black markets, the darker it gets. Traffic, Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. You have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. World News Now. And America This Morning. The best new videos. Breaking news overnight. Your money and concerns about inflation. The pandemic is not over. The stories people are talking about. You don't want to shave your legs? Don't. I was gonna say. And what to expect in the day ahead. From the top of the world, baby! ABC World News Now and America This Morning. Weekday morning starting at 2 a.m. Eastern. Up all night to keep you up to date. Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on all the tough questions, straightforward reporting, no spin, no hype, no bull. Thank you for making ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos, the number one Sunday morning news show versus the competition. Welcome to This Week. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24 there for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. 
She was Diva. drama, money and fame, shop amazing, the prime housewife. Then suddenly, we've seen a lot of things on The Real Housewives, but we've never seen anyone be arrested. Unpredictable rich woman. Sign me up. Money. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Welcome back. We're tracking several headlines around the world. More than 50 million people are now under new lockdown orders in China as COVID-19 cases there surge. China reported nearly 1,500 new infections today, a fourfold increase in just the last week. China has pushed for a COVID-0 policy since the pandemic began in Wuhan more than two years ago. Authorities in London were forced to respond when squatters occupied a mansion that is suspected of belonging to a Russian oligarch on Britain's sanctions list. The group waved banners from the balcony, including one that read, this property has been liberated. At least four arrests were made. A new tension between the U.S. and Iran after a missile attack near the American consulate in the northern Iraq city of Erbil. The prime minister of Iraq inspected the damage today. Iran claimed responsibility, calling the barrage a retaliation for an Israeli strike in Syria that killed two members of the Revolutionary Guard. No injuries were reported. U.S. officials have condemned the attack. If you're walking around in a bit of a haze today, like I am, that is likely because of that hour of sleep that you lost this weekend as we were all forced to spring ahead an hour for daylight saving time. For more on the impact that the time change has on us, we're joined now by our friend, ABC News Live anchor, Diane Macedo, author of The Sleep Fix, Practical, Proven, and Surprising Solutions. Our resident sleep expert, we <laughs> thank you so much for being here and providing uh, some much needed help. We have that dreaded spring forward oh. moment. Explain what's happening the worst. Really physically with our bodies during this time. So we often focus on the hour of sleep that we lose on Saturday night, but it's not just about that hour we lose. Because we change the clocks, we are also then essentially jet lagged oh. by an hour. And that can take a while to wear off. It can also affect some of us a little bit more because for example, if you are a night owl, we all have specific times that our body clock sends us wake signals and sleep signals. So if you're a night owl, that means you don't get those wake signals until late morning and you don't get those sleep signals until late night. And so when we hit daylight savings time, it just then makes that aspect of things even worse for that group of people. All right, so give us some tips, much needed tips in order to cope with this change. So the most powerful tool to set that biological clock, to set your circadian rhythm is light. So I love the idea of putting a therapy light in your bathroom. I have one in my bathroom. This is just one example of, of one. And the ideal is to get sunlight for 30 minutes in the morning, but we can't all do that. So that will mimic that sunlight. And now you're just shaving, you're brushing your teeth, you're doing your hair, doing your makeup, your normal routine, but you're still Still getting that bright light and that's telling your brain it's morning it's time to wake up which helps you start getting wake signals at the right time and because that's setting your clock now you start getting sleep signals at the right time as well making it easier to fall asleep and easier to wake up I have a young son I know you have two kiddos at home yeah. it seems like it's really hard in some cases for kids to adjust any thoughts for for how parents should adapt and, and help them to, to still get a good night's sleep it's the same idea you want to expose them to light in the morning to sink their clock clocks again. So get those windows open, turn the lights on in the house. When they wake up, try to get them in front of bright light as quickly as possible so their bodies can sing to that light. And then at nighttime, you want to do the opposite. Four to five hours before bedtime, start to limit your light intake so their body gets that clear contrast between bright light in the morning and very little light at night and resyncs their clock so they start sleeping on schedule again. March is Sleep Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. Kind of let's be some, some myth busters and, and tell us some misconceptions about sleep or, or lack thereof. So the last time I was on, we talked about how we don't all need eight hours. The real range can be anywhere from five to 11. And we also talked about the misconception that you need to have a perfect bed 
bedtime routine in order to sleep well. So the one I wanted to talk about today is the sleep through the night myth. And the truth of the matter is nobody sleeps through the night. We all sleep in roughly 90 minute cycles and at the end of a cycle, we wake up. And we do what I call a safety check. You scan the room really quickly, you make sure everything looks the way it's expected. If it does, you fall right back asleep. And because you're just barely awake, we don't even remember this happening. When we suffer from sleep problems for enough time, wakefulness becomes the threat. You start to fear, what if I wake up in the middle of the night? What if I can't fall asleep? What if I wake up too early in the morning? And so even if we wake up just for one of these routine safety checks, we suddenly start to panic. Now you're all revved up and now you can't fall back asleep. So I think it can be really helpful to people to know the next time it's two o'clock in the morning and you're wondering, why am I awake? The answer might be because that's completely normal. All right, some good advice there. And lastly, let's talk about revenge bedtime <laughs> procrastination. Guilty? <laughs> so this is a, a kind of a catchy term on something we've probably been doing for a while, which is when you have a really busy day, you're stressed out, you get home, you get to the end of the day, you feel exhausted, and you feel like you didn't get any time to yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we will seek revenge on the day by procrastinating our bedtime so we can get some me time to do whatever thing we feel like doing. Maybe it's scrolling Instagram, maybe it's playing a video game, you know, whatnot. But what this does, of course, is it cuts into our sleep time because now we're going to bed too late. And that just perpetuates the problem because now when you wake up the next day, you're gonna feel even more exhausted. You're gonna be less able to handle whatever stress the day throws out you. And then you're gonna feel, again, that much more tempted to jump on your screens or whatever it is and again, procrastinate your bedtime. So the tip that I like for this is to give yourself what I call a last call alarm. Because what I find what I would frequently do is I would get to all of a sudden bedtime would come and I would suddenly think of all these things that were still left on my to-do list and now I felt like I had to do them. So instead of doing that, you can set an alarm for yourself, or if you have a point in your day that can serve as a reminder, for me, it's when I put my kids down. I then say, okay, now it's time to either cross things, whatever's left on my to-do list off, or to make the conscious decision that that is now on tomorrow's to-do list. Okay. It staves off that feeling when you get, when bedtime hits and suddenly you feel like, oh, I have to, I have to do this, I have to stay up, I have to do X, Y, Z. All about giving ourselves that grace that you, you talked about. And we all need it so badly, we don't we? We so <laughs> do. Very good to have you here with me, Diane Macedo. The Sleep Fix is available now wherever books are sold. And still to come, Lizzo tells us about her new project. Stay with us. stories of our time, anytime. Nightline. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. I know what happened and I'm not guilty. Why the fascination with criminal trials? Figure out what's really out there. She revealed she had murdered his family. I know in my heart they did this. It's the time of suspicion. The ending's really tough. You don't know whether truth is going to be difficult to find unless you try to find it. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. It is a day dedicated to numbers. Today, March 14th, or 314, is known as Pi Day, the annual celebration of the mathematical constant. One pizza shop in Castro Valley, California, is encouraging customers to eat their way through the holiday with a steep discount. A pizza pie for just $3.14. Or just a pie there. What about that key lime pie? A deal that proves that math really can be delicious. 
And now let's catch up with Lizzo. The superstar has a new show. It's a boot camp style series about her search for backup dancers, all with Lizzo's signature self-love style. ABC's Steve Osinsami sat down with a three-time Grammy winner to discuss her ongoing efforts to promote body positivity and inclusivity. She's the reigning queen of self-love. Is that oh my God, it's looking heavenly. Ooh. And she's taking her crown to Amazon with a new series that celebrates the self-affirmation she preaches in her music. Girls that look like me don't get representation. Time to pull up my sleeves and find them myself. <laughs> we caught up with her at the South by Southwest Music Festival in Texas, where Lizzo was headlining. You're a, a creative force an entertainer, a writer, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and you're welcoming these women into your business. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. I'm definitely a B-O-double-S, -S, and <laughs> <laughs> I think this year is the first year I felt like I'm truly stepping into that position. Welcome this is their family. moment. And I think a lot of them realize that they're like, I'm living in my dream. And I think they didn't really have a chance to catch up to the reality of it. It was still very surreal. So a lot of them were like, am I here? And I'm like, girl, you better dance. Like, we need you to. <laughs> All the rumors are true, yeah. The Grammy winner is sharing her search for the backup dancers she celebrates at every one of her concerts. It's the battle of the big girls. A lot of reality TV or competition um, will dwell on, you know, for entertainment purposes, you know, some of the cattiness or the negativity. And this doesn't seem to do that. No. I think that these girls are entertaining enough. Their mm -hmm. stories, these are stories that people have seldom heard on television and in movies, on platforms like this. No toxicity, be kind to one another. I always drive it home, it's up to you to make that decision. If you go home, it's because of you, not because of me, because you already got what it takes to be here. Her dancers told us this wasn't a message they grew up hearing. This show, not it's not like The Biggest Loser, or it's not like um, 600 Count. It, this Where is, you can change yourself. It's, it's, this is uplifting yeah, all of our quote-unquote differences, right. um, and it's showing us that we're perfect just the way we are. We don't have to change to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. When I say cue the music, you're going to dance for me. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I'm ready. How These are all young women who dance. most of the we professional think dance we know what we ignore. I'm realizing that I do deserve a spot on that stage. Lizzo says that while it's men as a compliment, she doesn't respond well when people are so surprised how physical she gets at her shows. I think there's definitely a stereotype, a stigma and on bigger bodies, and I think people just assume that, you know, you've seen the trope in movies, the one person is lapping the smaller body and the heavier person, they're, you know, oh, I'm so tired, that's the joke. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, there's no punchline over here. A lot of what is your brand is this self-love and mm -hmm. self-respect and self-affirmation, mm -hmm. you know, that you bring to the world. Mm -hmm. Does it ever feel, you know, too heavy? No, because I always, like, promised myself that, you know, what I would, am doing is for me. It's a gospel she celebrates in life and in this series. I've watched wow. the industry change. I've even I'm heard specifically, stuff. people will be like, yeah, I went on an audition, and they said, we're looking for a Lizzo type. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, whoa, okay. Like, I don't want to be the only Lizzo, though. Watch out for the big girls is going to make sure that there's not just one Lizzo. Oh, what is happening? Only one Lizzo, that is for sure. Thanks to Steve O for bringing us Lizzo. And that is our show for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. I'm Lindsay Davis. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Have a great night.